A while ago, I took a look at this tiny little fan heater that basically just uh, has a little stand that folds down and you can just sort of point it into the ear and it had a sort of pink label thing on it and it's got a simple on off switch and it was quite interesting. It used a positive temperature coefficient thermistor uh, heating block with a thermal cutout and a little 3 volt fan run from a capacitive dropper. And uh, it's worth mentioning that someone else bought one of these and they said that they ran it continuously but the fan packed in, the motor packed in. However, that's not what we're taking a look at. This time, we're taking a look at this rather interesting one here, which I have to admit, I got it purely because of the picture of all the flames licking around it, which doesn't seem a, a very good way to sell your product. But this is a, a little um, mini portable electric silent desk air heater fan home warmer heating winter fan. Uh, this one came from Signetin, C-Y-G-N-E-T-N, Signet N. Um, and it cost about £9.20. I think this one this one was delivered in the UK and it came through quite quickly. So take a look at it. I've already tested it. Well, I'll test it again. One moment. I'll just bring up the, the happy. Here's the happy. So it's got a pink case, which is the desired choice for this channel. And it's got a switch. It's got the, you can see the positive temperature coefficient block underneath here. And you can see what looks like a small computer fan in the back. So if I plug this in, initially the current, when I turn it on, will peak. So the power went, went to about 1.3 kilowatts there before stabilising down. This thing puts out quite a lot of heat. And after it's stabled, you'll see the power going down gradually until it finally gets to its standards sort of ambient temperature, which is round about the sort of 450 degree, uh, 450 watts mark. And the power factor is 0.975, that's mainly because it's a resistive load. What happens if we put it face down? How long is it going to take before it cuts out? Is it going to cut out or is it going to leave a big skid mark on my bench? I'll just put it away from my label here. So the power is still showing at 360 watts. Is it actually, it is actually blowing some air out the side, so it's actually quite, it's capable, let's block it completely in. So it's down to 240 watts, 200 watts, still running though. I thought it might cut out by now. Does it have secondary thermal cutout or am I just basically setting far to my bench? Uh, 160 watts. Fan is getting quite hot now. Okay, not convinced here. It's getting very hot. Right, tell you what, let's uh, not do that then. Let's open it up and see if there is a thermal cutout inside. Because I don't want to melt it before I've actually even opened it up. Uh, tell you what, I'm going to run it for a while. Just to let the air flow through it. And get it down to a sensible temperature. Uh, okay, that may do it. right here. Right, so the other one before did cut out. This one did not cut out. That's not to say that it would if it got up to a, a high enough temperature. Oh, came with a proper style of British plug. Not necessarily the best quality, but looks okay. And the fuse is connected in line. It is actually, it is a 13 amp fuse. Let's pop this open. Is it going to use a capacitive dropper again? I would guess the fan is going to be a 12 volt type, so it could be a capacitive dropper unit, but 100 milliamps, the typical current of those fans, is actually quite high. I wonder what it's going to be. It could be a little switch mode supply, but I honestly don't think they'd waste that much money on it. The front is coming off. I wasn't expecting that. Ooh, it's a little switch mode. It's a buck regulator based on the choke and uh, a little switching circuit in there. There is a, oh God, right, that was, that was a close scrape. Then there is a thermal fuse last resort. There's no, hold on, let's get this out then. Oh, there is a thermal fuse. There is a thermal cutout and that thermal fuse. Oh, this thing's just falling into bits now. Oh wait, uh, hold on, there is a huge capacitor. Maybe that's an inductor for, hold on, let's unplug it. Uh, no, that is a switching chip. So what, what's the capacitor for? Oh, well, that's strange. I may have to explore that. Um, here is the heater block. 
which is typical of what you'd expect. It's actually made of lots of pieces of the ceramic material. These things, uh, it's called positive temperature coefficient heating. And if you can see these sort of bits of uh, ceramic stuff in there, they are the actual heaters. And they're sandwiched between these aluminium fins. And these are connected. The, the fins are live. That's why it's got a fairly uh, decent mesh in the front to stop people poking fingers in. And uh, the top and the bottom here will probably connect to one connection. They are they connect by red, and then the middle to the bit to the other. So they basically got these in parallel. So th there's power applied to both sides of these little ceramic blocks. That's quite toasty. There is the one-shot thermal fuse. That's a bit sad. And and there is the uh, bimetallic cutout in here. The little tiny uh, thermal cutout switch. Okay, let's get this circuit board off. And explore what it is, and see how that capacitor's connected. I kind of want to know what that is. There is a little fuse on board as well. Now let's uh, investigate. Oh, it's very neat in the back. Uh, this is where I should really short out any capacitors that look as though they could hold a significant charge. So I'll do it with a metal object. No, that's not charged. Where's the other one that's across there? It's not charged. Um, what do we have? Right, tell you what, I am going to reverse engineer this. Give me a moment, I'll be back shortly. Yeah one day later, because uh, I was uh, suffering major sleep deprivation, not because I'm under the weather or anything like that, just simply because I was staying up far too late, uh, looking, researching subjects, just literally spending all night on the internet researching stuff. But anyway, I've had some sleep. I did start reverse engineering this yesterday, and it was very clear it wasn't just normal circuitry. So that's part of the reason I thought, oh, screw this, I'm off to bed. And then now I'm fresh in the, in the morning, well, evening now, uh, let's take a look at the circuit and I've properly reverse engineered it. So the incoming, so let's zoom down this, it's the best bit. The incoming supply to the circuit board, the neutral actually comes onto the where it's actually marked live. And the reason for that is that uh, they've shuffled things a bit in the unit. The live is coming in and it's going to the switch and then it's pretty much going to the neutral connection, then going straight to the heaters. The neutral is coming in from the uh, incoming supply. It's going onto the circuit board, going through this fuse and then feeding the circuitry and the heater. So here is the circuitry. Neutral comes in, goes through the fuse, and then it feeds the heaters directly by going through the thermal fuse. The, there's the, the one-shot thermal fuse, the worst case, that's the one that trips when everything else has gone wrong. It's set to 142 degrees Celsius. If it gets that high, it's like last resort, kill the unit, and the unit will not work after that. These are the little thermal fuses. They've got a pointy end. They look almost like a, an open diode, if you will. But in reality, they contain an alloy usually that just melts at a specific temperature and then just recoils back. There's various different constructions. Uh, the only way to fix this is to uh, replace them. And you might notice the ends are crimped. That's to avoid soldering onto the leads because that could actually trigger it. But you can, if you do this yourself, you can just clamp that in a pair of grips to dissipate the heat from it as a heat sink when you solder. A uh, very common scenario that those things go. The next thing in line is the bimetallic thermal cutout, this little thing, a very common style. You see these a lot in China, in Chinese products. And that is set to trip at 85 degrees Celsius. So that probably was in the borderline of tripping when I put my hand over the heater and blocked all the air into it. Unfortunately, I didn't block the air completely just because of its design. It was able to circulate the air inside, but it was getting hot. I think if I'd left it a bit longer, it would have tripped this. But that then feeds the heaters. And if that had happened... I didn't really think of that. Maybe it did trip because I just thought the fan, I thought the whole lot would have died. But in reality, the fan would have kept running. Maybe that did trip then. Not sure. Uh, but that feeds the two PTC uh, arrays in here. The positive temperature coefficient heater arrays, those little sort of grey ceramic stripes down there. Then there's this one microfarad, which is quite high value, X2 suppression capacitor. I reckon that's just because they're trying to comply with selling it in the UK. And uh, this is quite noisy looking electrical circuitry. Uh, it may also, I wonder if it was, uh, I don't know, 
wonder if it was there to try and protect the circuitry from uh, mains borne glitches actually causing problem problems. But then there's a 10 ohm resistor and a diode. That's uh, this 10 ohm resistor here and this diode here that uh, then charge this capacitor here, which is um, this one right next to those resistors. And it gives a high voltage DC supply, 400 volt, 3.3 megafarad. It'll probably in the UK charge about 350 volts. But then it's really odd because that's basically just one end of a switch. The circuitry is strange in this. It derives its own power supply after it's started up. I guess there might be a little resistor in there. Hold on, let me just uh, take a look at this. Um, there it says HV start block, and it, basically it's got a little section of the circuitry to start it up. The chip, incidentally, is a PN8024R. I kind of, I could find pictures of schematics. This schem schematic does not fit it. This one does. And I found the company that makes it, chipown.com CN, but I couldn't find the data sheet in their website. And even on the data sheet archive type websites, the ones that just splat you with adverts and don't give you the data sheet, I, even on that, I found a couple of pages and lots of adverts and not really what I wanted. But uh, it contains modules. It has a sense resistor here, in here for uh, determining how much current's flowing through the circuit. It's got the switching transistor. It's got an inductor. This is a non-isolated supply, by the way. It's designed to buck the voltage down from mains voltage to a fixed voltage of 12 volts in this instance. And then it's got comparators in here. Uh, things worthy of note, this little capacitor here for uh, is used to provide a stable voltage reference inside for the comparators. Then it's got the oscillator. It's got the. It's just got the usual protection modules. That's more or less it. But it does monitor the it's VDD, it's supply voltage rail. It between that and the ground, it seems to monitor for the 12 volts internally, and that's it's just set for that voltage. Let's take a look at the circuit. The circuit has the chip itself. It's got that little 30, 33 nanofarad stabilization uh, capacitor for its internal circuitry. It's got its own little voltage reference supply here, which is based on a diode coming from, in this case, theoretically compared to its supply, it's the ground. But in reality, um, everything's flipped the way it works because the output supply, that's the positive, and the, the switch side is the negative. It's quite complex the way this works. It relies on what actually happens here is that when the MOSFET turns on inside, the end of this inductor is taken positive. And then when it turns off, when it reaches either a current threshold or after a certain time, it turns off and the magnetic field thus collapse, collapses and it goes negative. And when it goes negative, uh, that then effectively charges this capacitor up with a negative voltage, which is the what's going to be monitored eventually to provide that 12 volt supply, which is measured between the ground and the uh, rail down here. See, this is, it's complex. It's not a simple little circuit to follow. And it does derive with this 10 megafarad and that diode, it does derive its own supply once it's started up. It looks so simple when I draw it down like this. It wasn't simple to reverse engineer because it it wasn't seemingly logical at all until you've actually reverse engineered it and worked out how it works. There's a 4.7k resistor across the output. I guess that's just for stability, maybe if the fan gets disconnected so the circuit doesn't do something weird. Um, and that is it. That's the circuitry. It's an interesting little unit. It seems quite nicely made. I'm going to have to maybe try overheating it again, see, put it together and overheat it and see if I can make it trip. But I don't see why it wouldn't. Uh, and it does have that last resort if it didn't anyway. But that's more or less it. It's fundamentally a little 12 volt supply for the standard computer style fan and uh, just a fixed feed when you turn it on, not just to the power supply for that fan, but to the uh, PTC heater blocks, which keep in mind that if you ever decide to poke one of these, that these are alternate live and neutral, that's all live in there. That's why it's got this rather stout mesh across the front. But it looks reasonable enough. Its construction looks okay. So, um, yeah, I don't know how good it be. It would be in long term, but uh, it's a logical little thing and it's not that expensive. It's certainly, it could be another good source of this component here. I mean, for your money, you'd get a computer fan, a non-isolated supply, but more importantly, you'd get this uh, neat little uh, ceramic heater block uh, in this uh, housing, which I guess 
the plastic feels fairly flexible. It doesn't feel like that hard, fireproof plastic, but it will presumably be rated for that, uh, for the rating of this unit, the, the actual temperature it's likely to go up to. Plus, it's got the protection. But there we go. These are self-regulate anyway. They do, do cut their power down if they get too hot. But there we go. Interesting and worth taking to bits.